So, in my last Medicine Diaries videos, I told you that I have quite a few things to catch you up on. And this is one of those things. Hey everyone! So, today I want to make a video talking about my phlebotomy training experience. Now, if you don't know what phlebotomy is, it's basically learning how to take blood. I decided to go and do this course for two reasons really. Um, the first one being that I thought it'd be quite a good, you know, medical experience and it's something that maybe later on I could get a job with. But also, because I'm doing my masters, and if you followed my channel you already know about this, the project I'm working on consists of working with monocytes, and these are a type of white blood cells. And because of this, I need to get uh, blood from healthy volunteers just so I can use it in my experiments. And the trick with this is that because I wasn't trained to take blood before, it meant every time I wanted to set up an experiment, I would have to like find one of the doctors or one of the nurses or somebody else that's trained. So I thought, you know what, let's just do two birds with one stone and just pay the money and go and do this course. So the course I did consists of two parts. The first part of the course was kind of like a classroom based kind of situation where a whole bunch of us went there and we went through this booklet and it just taught us a bit more about you know the structure of veins, you know the history of phlebotomy, how you do and don't treat patients etc. And after completing that I received a certificate of attendance just to say that I've got the preliminary basics down. The best part about that session though was that we got to practice taking blood from dummies and also right at the end we partnered up and if you were partnered with somebody and you both gave consent you could practice taking blood for the first time. I partnered up with my friend who I met there called Rachel and this is a picture straight after um, of when she took blood from me. And gosh it was such an interesting experience especially for somebody like me who wants to do medicine because it was that tiniest teeniest little taste of medicine and you know as close to the practical stuff as I've ever been able to get. So after all of that and practicing with the dummies and going through the booklet. The next part was booking the part two of the course. And in the second part of this training, we were to be assessed by a nurse on how to, how to take blood and also get a bit more information about what it's like to be a phlebotomist. Good morning, everyone. So I'm vlogging today because today is the second part of my phlebotomy training. Right now it is seven o'clock. Um, I'm up bright and early, I've already uploaded a video and I'm just sitting and reading through some of the, I guess, background reading that I have to do which it's very bad of me because I had so long to do it but I've just been so busy in fact, that is what my calendar looks like I've been so unbelievably busy and last night and this morning I've been having a little bit of a panic so I'm just having to like read through everything and try and learn as much of it as I can now um, but I don't think it should be too bad but I guess if it is, you'll find out about it. I also have to say that um, one advantage that I have had over, I guess, other people who are also doing the training with me today um, is that because after I did my first training, which they teach you how to actually take blood from a patient, I've already taken blood, I think, six or seven times um, just because I use blood in my research for my masters right now. So my poor colleagues and friends have been told to just, you know, sit down, come on, roll up your sleeves, I need like 30 mils. So in that sense, I've got more practice with the physical side of it. Um, but I just need to, you know, try and digest as much of this as I can. And we'll see how it goes. Hello, we've just got into the clinic. This is Rachel. Hello. We did the last uh, course together and I thought I might get her opinion on what she thought the last one was like. Uh, last training session. Yeah, it was um, quite relaxed, but quite a lot of content to take in. We've got our... Mm -hmm. A booklet. <laughs> um, and I was showing them it this morning. Ah, good. Okay, so you're, you're up to speed. Um, <laughs> and I'm not sure which bits of it we'll cover today. Yeah, we're both a bit nervous. But yeah, we don't know how we'll be tested. Yeah, but we should be okay. If we're allowed to film, we might be allowed to film. We might <laughs> include something in. Anyway, it's vampire time. I know. <laughs> So the second part went really well and me and Rachel came out super pleased. As I said, the nurse went through a whole aspect of um, a phlebotomist's job and what kind of things you need to know, a bit of you know bedside manner and just the practicalities of the job. And then once again me and Rachel got to take blood from each other and we both passed the assessment and we both got our second certificate which is a certificate of competence. Okay. So we just finished the session and again we took blood from each other. Do you want to show yours? 
Okay, I would, I would, I would show yours, but mine is like under here. And um, it went well. It did. I think and the nurse, um, the nurse who was training us the first time I went today, she was really lovely, and she was like saying that she was like really impressed with us, which either means we're good or it means that she's had a lot of other bad stuff. Yeah, you never know what. The, yeah, where we'd the bar like is. to believe the first one, yeah. though, obviously. <laughs> Um, yeah, thank goodness, I'm so relieved. I'm so I know, I was nervous as well. We thought it was going to be like a really official, not not that this wasn't official, but like we thought it was going to be like a sit down silence exam. Yes, but no, it was really casual um, and I feel like we both developed a new skill. Yes. And it'd be yeah. interesting to practice that in the future. Definitely. Um, so I guess we'll sign up here. Yeah, all right, see you later. So guys, as I said, I've had to practice taking blood from my friends and colleagues quite often. And Jack, who you would have met in my uh, Day in a Life for Researcher video, just happened to be with me on the day where I needed some blood for an experiment and he kindly offered to let me film it as well. So I'm just going to share that clip with you now. But as a bit of a warning or a disclaimer, if you like, if you aren't a massive fan of needles, then maybe skip the part and um, skip the next part until the end of the video because um, I actually show how to insert the needle. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly show you the equipment we're using. Jack is there getting ready. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do is take blood in these tubes. These have got EDTA in them and that is just an anticoagulant to make sure that the blood doesn't clot. I'm going to be using a tourniquet as you will see in a minute. Um, also a plaster for the end. I have got a 23G ga 23 gauge butterfly needle and I'll show you that in a minute and it's got the vacutainer attached to it. I've already washed my hands and I'm also going to be wearing gloves and yeah I think that's pretty much everything. Maybe I'll in the actual phlebotomy video I'll talk in more detail about everything. But Jack, are you ready? I'm ready to be bled. Do you give consent for your I blood to be give used consent to in my me. research? Yes. Fantastic. That's the most important thing. Um, oh, and by the way guys, if you do not like needles, then maybe fast forward this bit. But if you're interested, keep watching. <laughs> So I don't know if you guys can see, but this vein here is called the median cubital uh, and that is the vein that I'm going to be taking blood from. I think that's the uh, vein that's most commonly used, um, but I guess it, it does depend on the person. With Jack is very clear. So firstly, I'm just going to give it a quick rub with ethanol, just clean the surrounding areas and then I can go on to put the tourniquet on. And what this does is just helps the veins pop out so that they make it becomes easier to see. Which is a bit tight. Um, does that feel okay? Yeah. Perfect. Can I get you to make a fist? Okay. Yeah, so you can really see the vein. I'm, I, I don't think you guys can see it on camera very well. Um, not this one, but this one's protrude, protruding quite nicely. So I think I'm going to go with this vein, but it needs to be at an angle like this. Okay, so now um, you shouldn't leave the tourniquet on for too long. So you've got to be quite quick with this. So this, as I said, is a butterfly needle and it's already attached to the vacutainer here. And I hope this is in focus, guys. I hope you can see this. Um, I think it is in focus. Yeah, there we go. Um, so yeah, this is the butterfly needle. And what you're going to see in a minute is when I insert this in, a little bit of blood should come in here and that's called the drawback. So let's start that. You've got to position it at the right angle. Jack, are you, are you okay for me to? I'm ready. To? Great, okay. Sharp scratch. Okay, so I don't know if you guys see, can you see the drawback of blood going into here? I hope you can. Um, anyway, so when I can hold this in place like that, and with this hand, I can hold the vacutainer and put this in the tubes like this, and the blood should go through. Sorry, it's a bit difficult with left hand. There you go. And there, as you can see, oh, my glove is in the way. As you can see, getting blood going into the tubes. How are you feeling? Excellent. Excellent? Like I'm being bled. Good. Great. <laughs> First tube done. And once you've done it, immediately you want to invert it just so it's mixed in with the EDTA to prevent um, blood clotting. That, that. So before you take the last tube, you take the tourniquet off um, for your final tube. So this is my final one, final and fourth one. 
um, you just have to be careful as well like I think a common mistake that is often made and it's very easy to make is to leave the tourniquet on especially when you take the needle out and when you do that because there's a high pressure blood can go everywhere okay fantastic okay so the tourniquet is off now do you mind turning your arm a little bit so they can see so the needle is in like that um, I will get a fresh cotton bud, put that in there, and then just gently take the needle out like that. So now, to prevent any kind of bruising, what you need to do is apply pressure. And I could just get you to hold that like that. And I'm going to show you something really cool, guys. So because um, needle stick injuries are something that can occur and they're quite dangerous, I hope this can focus. There we go. So the way that these are designed is that you can pull this. Oh. There you go. And that just covers the needle and this won't come back down again. This means now the needle is safe to be discarded. So, they've all done, got the blood. Just going to get Jack to put pressure on that um, for, you know, one or two minutes, something like that, just to make sure um, he doesn't get any bruising later. Um, I have got four tubes of blood here and I'm going to show you how I extract white blood cells from them as I said in my vlog. Um, and now the final part is, um, you just want to check to see how it's looking. So can I just have a quick look? Yeah, so if you can have a look here, the bleeding is stopped. There's like a little bit, but that's okay. Um, and now Jack, would you like me to put a plaster on? Yeah? Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> and just to finish the whole thing off, I'll put a little plaster on as well. There we go. Fantastic. All done. How was how was the experience? Oh wonderful. No, good. it was good. Very ten painless. Out of ten. ten out of ten, very painless. Very good. I'll try and catch up with him um later in a day or so and try and see how it looks. That's why I usually do just to make sure there isn't any bruising or anything like that. And there you have it. So I actually caught up with Jack a few days later and you know, he's almost fine, he's still alive, there's no bruising, I promise, he's fine. And as I said, the clip that you just saw is part of a bigger vlog that I've made. So I will also link that below in case you want to see the full video. So my lovelies, if you enjoyed this video, do give it a thumbs up because it helps me out a lot. And overall, I hope that you found this video somewhat informative. So that is everything from me today. As I said, I hope you enjoyed this video. And until next time, take care and I'll see you later. Mwah.